Sharp, or actually Pierce Gallo, rather, who is batting in the seventh spot. And he walks Briar Hawkins with two outs here in the top of the first. That's laced out to center. Center fielder on his wheels, off the tip of his glove. Rounding second, rounding third, and heading home is Hawkins. And again, the walk does the damage. Yeah, it does, Birch, but I tell you, that would be a play that uh, I can assure you center fielder Brady Allen feels like he should have made that ball going off the tip of his glove there. That ball was hit off the end of the bat. Little dribbler to the pitcher. Jordan pounces on it, underhands over to first. Burgess takes the 2-2 and sends it to right field for a base hit. So South Carolina with a runner aboard with two down. In on the fist and he will rope that into center field where it drops in front of Bryce Theodosio. And the Gamecocks have two on now with two outs. And Olinchuk gets Khalil swinging, so three strikeouts. He's to rise. And it's a leadoff walk to Teodosio here in the third. That is laced fair as it stays inside the chalk down in right field. Runner will hold up at third. Good throw in by Andrew Eister, who got there quickly in the corner, but it's a double. Hawkins on deck, lifted in the air. Infielder shortstop has it, and Khalil makes the catch. Third. Yes. He gets the punch out as Hawkins goes down looking. That is a huge strikeout, and the crowd loves it here. This is low and away. I got a feeling they'll just put him on here now, Birch. They do. In the zone. That's there what it he is. does, and he strikes him out. And Founders Park reacts. Out, base is empty. Here's the 1-1, one -one, and that's hit hard into center field. Center fielder going back to the wall. That's out of here. Seven home runs now this season for the NCAA leader who ties this ball game at one. Wes Clark doing the damage with one out. Going yard on Ty Olinchuk in South Carolina. Kip, you've got to think that you said it. Brennan Jordan could really turn the momentum by ending an inning with a strikeout against a key at, in a key at bat. He did that, and now Wes Clark comes in takes one long into deep center field to tie this ball game at one. And the momentum has certainly shifted to Carolina as well. Yeah, you're right, Birch. That's a huge, huge home run there. Really shocked that Olin Chuck went to the soft stuff there as he hangs that one out for Wes Clark to get big time extension and hits a box. Very deep pitching staff this year from Mark Kingston and Skylar Mead as a walk is issued to begin the fifth. Runner going as the hit and run is on, and it works as Hawkins slaps it into right and rounding second, safe at third, as Dylan Brewer, who opened up the fifth here with a walk, and he is I think down at third now. Yeah, excuse me, Birch. I think that's an outstanding call by Monty Lee to go with the hit and run there, facing a power arm here. He's just trying to put that – Hit well to right, right fielder giving chase. It's over the right fielder, Eister. One is in, two is in. The tie is broken with two outs and two strikes. A big hit by Jonathan French to put the Tigers on top, three to one. I'll tell you, Birch, you see him go back with the slider there. In my opinion, the wrong pitch after seeing French with well, a pretty long swing, and behind the fastball, there's been two mistakes today. One by or that one there, by or one earlier by Brennan Jordan going with the slider, and then there again, staying soft. Really think that's the only way he gets that ball in play. So, Jonathan French delivers for the Tigers. It's in the count. 
to Wimmer at second. Makes the throw this time to end the inning, but not before Clipson takes the lead. On a that ball is hit well. Center fielder going back to the wall. And how about that? Braylon Wimmer leads off the fifth with a solo shot, the second of the day for the Gamecocks off of Ty Olinchuk, who had not given up a deep ball this year. The Gamecocks welcome him to the series in this rivalry. And South Carolina within one. And here to Brady Allen. That's hit well towards the gap and it will fall in front of the left fielder, Alex Urban, and it's a one out single for Brady Allen who continues to hit the ball well this weekend against Clemson. That ball is roped into left. Allen holds up at second, wisely putting on the brakes. But South Carolina now with a runner in scoring position who can run well, that's Brady Allen. The 2-2 is hit into deep left center. Center fielder going back at the wall, it's gone. Another jack for Wes Clark. Another big two strike hit for the Gamecocks. It's home run number eight. Another multi home run game for Wes Clark. And the country's leader in long balls now has 20 RBIs as he touches home and puts the Gamecocks ahead. Five to three, and Founders Park is crazy. And you see Wes Clark here. That pitch just didn't get in enough. That's a really good pitch there, but Wes Clark is so strong, he's able to get that ball out of the ballpark. I think it probably stays in. At nighttime here, Birch, we've seen the ball. It flies during the day here at Founders Park. Look at that. Wes Clark. For his career here at South Carolina, and that's a heavy, heavy fastball. And it's a little bit funky looking, too. I really, really. Parker will drop one into left field. And the Tigers have two aboard, one down for John. Go! 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 A lengthy quality at bat for Jonathan French. Low. Out of the reach of the second baseman, one run is in. And Clemson trails five to four now. Tough play here for Wimmer going to his left, and he's trying to go and turn. I don't think he has a chance to turn two, but he's obviously trying to go to second base there, and really they're just on the exchange again. That is going to bring one in and rounding third and taking the lead for Clemson is Jonathan French who walked his way aboard in a lengthy at-bat. Takes the lead back for Clemson. As he came in, touching home a little gimpy as well. But Pierce Gallo, who was 0 for 3. Bottom of this Clemson batting order, as you see, the catcher, traditional powers in college baseball, Ole Miss and Arkansas taking those down. There's a button to first, and he's going to slide in safely. Mendham, the right idea, and the only thing that he could do. But good base running for Clemson. They add a run, and they have a two-run advantage now with still with one out. Well, I tell you what, there's only about two or three times a game, in my opinion, where a head coach really has a chance to impact it. And so far for Clemson, Monty. Walked and scored a run. Mm, he's got Throwback. him. He got him. Caught him leaning off of second. And Colin Burgess, who has one of the better arms in college baseball, just threw a BB down. 
Malone sharply hit the third. Third baseman able to come up with it, but unable to get the throw over, and he would not have gotten Malone regardless. But South Carolina with a much needed runner. Wes Clark wraps one with two strikes for a single into center. And the Gamecocks have runners on first and second. Mendham able to get it through. Brennan Malone touches home. Wes Clark will have to hold up at second. And South Carolina now within one and two on for a guy who has just feasted on Tiger pitching in this series for his career, and that's Andrew Eister. Take a look at this piece of work by Mendham there. Well, it gets the other change up. I mean, a, a good – I mean, that's an out, really. You know, the tough part about this is it's a good adjustment by Mendham to, you know, hit. Right wow. up the middle, rounding third, heading from home, tying this game at seven is Wes Clark and another two-strike clutch performance out of Andrew Eister to tie this game at seven and the Gamecocks have answered the Tigers yet again. I tell you what, when it's going well for you, it's going well and I tell you, Eister does a good job of getting a hit up the middle but that ball hit in the base. What could have been a double play, it was hit so hard and boy, the Gamecocks caught some breaks last night and Slapped a second. And you're not going to get the speedy Noah Myers. But they're going to call him out. Oh, wow. That is a bad call, in my opinion. They're going to call interference. Yep, interference on Eister. So it will be the final out. But the Gamecocks tie it up. It's 7-7. Seven to seven. Pops him up, fly ball right field. Allen is there. Down go the Tigers. One, two, three. Bottom. This could be trouble. He's in that danger zone, but the third baseman makes it, and it's a quick one, two, three in the eighth. Here has been very impressive so far. Late jump on the ball, and it popped out of the glove of the center fielder, Noah Myers. I'm not sure. Myers just didn't read that correctly off the bat. Uh, from Peters to get the out. That's going to drop in front of the right fielder. A one-out hit for another freshman. Fly ball, left field. Eister. And again, Sanders comes in and ends the inning. We got Well, Kip, in this series, it has seemed that things just go right for South Carolina when number 33 gets on the base paths and he walks him. Brady Allen moves in to scoring position. Win this ball game. There it is. Driven hard to right field, and Andrew Eister is going to walk it off back to back. The Gamecocks will take the series against their rivals. Kip Bolt Knight, he's exactly who you wanted in this situation. And how about that? Back to back walk off hits for Andrew Eister, who has just been tremendous in this series against Clemson. Unbelievable stuff there, Birch, for South Carolina. Just outstanding. Two games in a row, Andrew Eister with the walk off.